Hey, so in chapter seven, we're going to be looking at some examples. So remember, in chapter seven, what we're going to be talking about is um, comparing a sample to a population. So a lot of the times we're not able to get the actual, like, all the information or census from our population. So what we have to do is we have to infer using just a sample. So in this example, out of 368 women interviewed, 298 feel they have been discriminated against due to their gender. So the first question is what percentage of women feel they have been discriminated against due to their gender? So when we're doing this to find the percentage, it's going to be 298. So those are the women who felt they were discriminated against divided by all the women that we interviewed, which is 368. Now, if we divide that out, and let's just go ahead and round to four decimal places, I think that's pretty good. We are going to get 0 0.8098 if you round, which is 80.98%. Okay, now the next question is, it wants us to find a 95% confidence interval and write a verbal interpretation. First, it wants us to do this by hand, and second, it wants us to do this using StackCrunch. So first, if we want to do this by hand, there's two things we need to do. Okay, First, we need to find out what p hat is, which we already did. It's 0 0.8098. And we also have to find the standard error. So remember, the standard error is going to be the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat all of that divided by n, which is the size of our sample. So in our case, that's going to be the square root of 0 0.8098 times 1 minus 0 0.8098 divided by, remember, this is the size of our entire sample, not just the people that said they felt discriminated against. So that's going to be divided by 368. So let's go ahead and round that to four decimals as well. Okay, and we're going to get a standard error of 0 0.0205. Again, going to round to two decimal places. Now, we're almost done. To find a 95% confidence interval, that is going to be p hat plus and minus two times that standard error. So, in our case, it is going to be 0.8098 plus and minus 2 times 0 0.0205. 0 0.7688 when you subtract two standard errors, and 0 0.8508 when you add two standard errors. So we're still not done with the problem because it still asks us to write a verbal interpretation. Okay, so here's the verbal interpretation, which will be the same as when we do it by StatCrunch. Here's the verbal interpretation. What we did is that we looked at a sample. So this is what our sample tells us, but that is not exactly what we can say about the population, right? So even if the population is, let's say, perfectly 50-50, 50% women, 50% men, if you take a random sample of 100 people, it's very rare that it's actually going to be a perfect 50-50 split, right? So this 95% confidence interval tells us this. It says we are 95% confident that between, so that 0.7688, that's 76.88%, to 85.08% of, now remember we looked at a sample, but a confidence interval is trying to tell you something about the whole population. So we are 95% confident that between 76.88% and 85.08% of all women have felt
discriminated because of their gender. All right, so again, I know I'm kind of um, really driving this in, but it's very important. This is taking something from a sample and trying to say something about a bigger population or a bigger picture. So even though our sample came back 80.98%, well, that's probably what the, the whole population actually is. The whole population is probably more like something between 76 to 85%. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do this using StatCrunch. So, once you've logged on to StatCrunch, you're going to go Stat, we're going to go to Proportion Statistics, one sample, and we're going to do this one with a summary. Now, the number of successes is just the number of people that said one thing or another. So, in our case, we had 298 women answer affirmatively. So, they answered, yes, I felt discriminated against. So that's going to be 298. Number of observations is how many people we actually looked at total. So that's going to be 368. Now this hypothesis testing that's right here, we're going to get into that in chapter 8. You're actually going to click down here on confidence interval. Now since our confidence interval is 95%, we want our level to be 0.95. We're going to do it with a standard method, so don't worry about changing that. So we're going to go ahead and hit compute. Okay, now once we hit compute, the cool thing is not only does it give you your sample proportion, which is what was asked for at the very beginning, it also gives you the standard error, which we found, and it's going to give you the lower limit and the upper limit. So the lower limit using this was 0.7696, and the upper limit was 0.8498. So that compares pretty closely to what we found here. So using StatCrunch, we have between 0.769, let's say that's 7. So 0.7697 to 0.8499. So again, StarCrunch uses a little bit more sophisticated tools than um, what we use. So we rounded, things like that. That's definitely going to change the answers, but they're very, very close. Again, like I've said in other videos, when you're doing your homework, it's good to know how to do this by hand in case you ever have to work backwards. However, the homework is going to want you to do this using StatCrunch, so make sure that you know how to do this. Now, the next question is, do we have sufficient evidence to say that more than 70% of women feel discriminated against due to their gender? Why or why not? Well, we're 95% confident that somewhere between 77, 76% and 85% feel discriminated against. So if we're 95% sure that it's between 77 to 85%, do we have enough evidence to say that more than 70% of women feel discriminated against? And the answer is yes. Now, remember, the big question isn't just yes or no, it's why. So yes, because our confidence interval is roughly between 77 to 85% which is more than 70. Okay. Now, on to question two. A company claims that 56% of their light bulbs will last over five years. Suppose we take a sample of 200 light bulbs. Okay. First off, are we guaranteed that 50 6% of the sample will last over five years? Well, the answer is no. Just because 56% of all of their light bulbs will last over five years doesn't mean that these 200 that we took are going to exactly reflect all the light bulbs they ever produced. We could get them from a really bad or really good lot. Um, there's a lot of different things that could affect it. Also, what if out of 200, we only had 55% 
that burnt out or 60%, right? So are we guaranteed that 56% will last over five years? No, but should be close, but should be close to it. Again, this is kind of similar to the idea of if the population is truly, let's say, 50% female and 50% male, are you guaranteed to get 50-50 when you take a sample of 200 people? No, but it should be close. All right, the next one is that we want to find the standard error associated with a sample of 200. So remember, the standard error is going to be, well, since we don't have a sample, we're going to use the population proportion, which is the percentage that they claimed. So that's going to be 0.56 times 1 minus 0.56 divided by the size of our sample, which is 200. Okay. Again, we're going to round this to four decimals just so that we can be as accurate as possible. That's usually a pretty good bet in this class. Anytime you have a question of what you should round to, round to four decimal places. All right. So when we do that, we're going to get 0 0.03 one for our standard error. All right, the next thing is that we want to draw a sampling distribution using the claim above and the standard error found in part B. So if we draw a normal distribution, here's what this is doing. It's saying, hey, if we take a bunch of light bulbs, most of these light bulbs in this group, 56% will probably burn out within the first five years. Now, maybe more or less will last within five years, okay? Well, how many more or less? And this is where that standard error comes into play. So we're going to take that 56% and we're going to add that 3.51% of that standard error that we found. So 59.51 and then also one below that would be 52.49. Okay, now remember we're going to do um, one more standard error just for fun, just like the normal distribution. So one more below would be 48.98 and then one more above would be 63.02. Now, here's a good way of thinking of this. If you continue to take sample after sample after sample of 200 light bulbs, most of these light bulb samples would have 56% burning out um, within the first five years. Then you would have 59.51% or maybe 52.49%, right? Most of your samples would fall between that. If you took a sample, say, of 200 light bulbs and over say 65% of them lasted over five years, where would that fall? Well, 65% would be over here, right? So it would be possible, but very rare that a sample of 200 light bulbs would have that many that lasted that long. All right, so the last question is that we wanna use the above to find the probability that of our 200 light bulbs, 52% of them or less last five years, okay? So, 52% or less, what's the probability that happens? Well, if we look at this picture, 52% is about right here or less. So just like in chapter six, what we're going to do is that we're going to use this information to find the z-score. So note that in this part C, this is a normal distribution. It's a normal distribution and most things or most objects AKA samples are going to fall around that 56%. Now they're not all gonna fall around 60 or 56%. Some of them are gonna be more or less than that. And they're going to be 3.51 more or less than that. So just like in a normal distribution, we're going to find the z-score, which is going to be our population proportion minus what we expect to see in the population divided by our standard error. So in our case, that is going to be 
52% minus 56% divided by that standard error of 3.51. Which, when you do the math on that, remember, make sure that you have the top part in parentheses or your calculator is going to spaz out on you. So we're going to get a z-score of negative 1.1. So we're just going to round that because our z-table only goes up to two decimal places. Now, if we use our z-score table, negative 1.14, so negative 1.1 is right here, 0 0.04 is right here. If we line those up, we're going to get 0 0.1271. So the probability that a sample lasts or has light bulbs, 52% or less of our light bulbs, last five years is going to be 0.1271. So what's the probability that 200 of our light bulbs, 52 or less, last five years? That is going to be 12.71%. Awesome. So let me show you how to do this on StatCrunch uh, real quick. So we did sample proportions, but if you want to do this on StatCrunch, the first thing you have to do is you have to find the standard error. Okay. And we're going to be using this information right here. So when we're doing this on StatCrunch. We're going to be using this information. So go to StatCrunch and go to that normal calculator from chapter six. So calculators in normal. And remember on average, we're going to have 56% of our light bulbs last at least five years, give or take 3.51%. So that's gonna be our standard error. Now we wanna know what's the probability that 52% or less of our sample last five years compute and there's a probability right there for you all right so just to kind of summarize chapter 7 a little bit and how it relates to chapter 6 is that in chapter 6 what we were doing is that we were looking at just one person in a sea of people and that sea of people had an average give or take a standard deviation right so what we were doing is in a whole sea of people, we were looking at, hey, where does person X fall? Okay. In chapter seven, what we're doing is that we're looking at an entire population. Okay. And we're comparing an entire population, not to a single person, but to a sample of people. And that's how those two relate, is over here, I have a big group of people. So I have a big sample and I'm comparing a single individual. Whereas in chapter seven, I go even bigger and I have an entire population and I'm comparing it to a sample, which we call P hat. All right, there you go. That is it for chapter seven. Remember, if you guys have any questions at all, don't forget to email.